When you know that your time with someone is threatened, when you know that your communication with someone is threatened, when you know that your days are numbered, then you don't fret about the stuff that doesn't matter. And most none of it matters. So if, you know, if he spends a whole day watching TV, I don't want to watch. Does it matter? It doesn't keep me awake at night like it used to because now that I know it's happening, it's just hard at times, you know, if you think about it. Time is guaranteed to no one. It's a gift, and it's a gift we just can't seem to get enough of. And as the time flies, so do our memories. We do everything humanly possible to hold on to those moments and feelings that have made us who we are. Ned Cabrera, or Nardo as his friends call him, has made more than his share of memories. He's a Montana guy, born and raised. He's married to the love of his life and has a passion for surfing. The son of a doctor, he's a hard worker, spending more than 30 years as a program manager with an aerospace company. But over the course of the last four years, the life and memories he's worked so hard to build are fading. He's 54 years old and living with early onset dementia. I would say the most difficult was letting uh, my family know and the kids. It was very difficult. Um, I thought it was going to be easy, but it wasn't. And now that we have a few months after it, you know, I feel more comfortable talking it to people. And the difficulty now, it's just accepting it. Uh, I know it's happening, but I feel like I could live forever. But, you know, it's not the case in reality, so. Give me some. All right. It, it goes down to what they call primary progressive aphasia, which basically does with your written and oral communication. So supposedly someday, I'm supposed to lose those, you know, within five years, 10 years, we don't know right now. Sit, stay. I'm a little more self-conscious now, uh, cause I know that I get words mixed up and I write terrible and, you know, I can't understand people talking. Um, those are the times when I'm aware of it and I get frustrated. Go. When he would leave out words, the connecting <laughs> words like and, the, but, I thought it was just that his speech had become sort of lackadaisical. But it was happening also like in a birthday card to me. And he would just like, um, like sometimes his E's would end up on their sides or he would leave out those little connecting words. See, I knew what I wanted to say, but I, I couldn't remember the word. That's another thing they say, you start losing some of the words you use. But, but when I use a good word, I let my wife know. <laughs> if you catch me in the morning till about now until you know, afternoon, I'm pretty good. In the evening, it just seems a lot of things are too much. I don't understand things and sometimes it's tough walking and things like that. So, uh, and that's when I feel aware of it. I think I, I more worry about, not myself, I worry about my wife and my kids. This disease slowly takes away everything we hold dear, the moments and feelings that cannot be replaced. Oftentimes, leaving a trail of loneliness and depression. So in its place, Nardo and Lynn choose to live every day with faith and hope, yeah! giving light to those who struggle to find their way through the darkness. There. He definitely doesn't want to be any sort of a burden or a hardship. And so by him setting the standard, by him leading the way and making it okay for people to talk about, for people to ask us questions about, I think we both feel it is a great responsibility, but also a great opportunity to help families not be dealing in isolation with this. My outlook in life right now, after being diagnosed with this, is just to enjoy life. <laughs> Say it again. I just noticed all the little things that I worried about that aren't really matter much in life. My outlook of life is just enjoy as much time I can with my family, my kids, 
as they get older, and my wife especially, we plan to do some, you know, traveling here and there, but it's to enjoy life. We've, we've got family, we've got this community, which is so wonderful and so responsive. I think we're both really keenly aware that a lot of people have it in so many ways worse than we do. But I don't think for a minute we would ever think to complain or, you know, or wish it differently. I, th I think he put it well. We're just, we're just living each day. We don't know how long we'll have. Brandon Sullivan, MTN News.